Welcome back. Okay, there's our giraffe, and we are going to click on the move tool. And remember, his we lightened his hair a little bit. That's what we were doing. So we transformed and edited the pixels of his coat right there. So I'm going to click on the move tool. Turn, turn on show control. Uh, excuse me, show transform controls. And you can downsize him and all sorts of things like that and we can rotate him if we wanted him to look like he was peeping in and anytime remember when we change the size of an object or a photo whatever you're working with press enter to commit your changes okay um, the next thing when you go into show transform controls and you start making changes and you click on the file width and height up here you see 100 percent you can change things by percentage so if i wanted to downsize that to 75 percent both whoa now that's 75,000. oh my so here we go that's more like it 75 percent i just change it there and press enter okay uh, your x and y has to do with your position so let's just put in a 90 on the X and let's say 180 on the Y and it goes way up. Alright, so just know that you can use those things as well. Again, I've just made changes so I have to press enter to commit. Alright, enough of that. I'm going to turn off the transform controls. I'm still on the move tool. I'm going to close my history, get it out of the way going to turn off this extra layer I created and uh, get that out of the way and you can see there's your transparent background anytime you have the gray and white um, it's clear so to speak it's a transparent background and here is our SeaWorld photo alright I'm going to zoom out control minus I'm going to turn on transform controls and I the reason the giraffe came back on is because I'm on that layer. So click on SeaWorld. And you can see there was more to that photo. So um, you get to decide how you want your photo to look. For this learning activity, do not be disappointed or upset if what you choose is extremely pixelated. It very well could be. When uh, you copy and paste your photo in, it's probably going to be small from the internet. Okay? Now, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, well, that's great. Yours looks great. Well, what about mine? I've got a background and a sky on my giraffe. All right, let's go back to your giraffe. Here's our giraffe. Our background is locked. We're going to double click our background. And you can name your layer. That's always a good idea. But we only are probably going to have two layers, and we know obviously that's a giraffe. All right, we're going to add a photo from the internet and place our giraffe somewhere else. So I'm going to go to Google right quick. So Google, and that's the program I'm using. So images, let's see. I would like for him to be. Let's see, let's type in Jackson, oops, Jackson, Mississippi, and let's press enter and go to images. Let's just see what we get. Hmm. We could put him on the street downtown. That will work. Or we could put him outside the Capitol. Or we could put him at, in front of the sign right here. That looks like that looks I just happen to know what the state line looks like around uh, Olive Branch and Horn Lake area. That looks like the Durian off of 55 and 
between Tennessee and Mississippi line. But all right, and then the, look, you could put him in a hotel room or somebody's living room, even it doesn't really matter. So oh, he could be at a wedding. So all right, it's time to pick Fairview in. Let's put him in the yard over to Fairview. All right, so I've got the photo. I'm gonna right click, copy the image. Go straight back to Photoshop. Lots of ways to make a layer. Layer, new, layer. Go to your control palette on your layers panel over here, the little three lines that drop down. New layer there. Or down below, and you can't see it, I don't think. Just to the left of your trash can, there's a little image, a little thumbnail, it looks like a piece of paper click that and it just pops it in. Alright, and this is going to be, in my case, the fair view. So I'm on this layer and I'm just going to control and the letter V as in violet or violin and it pastes the fair view in and we're just going to stretch it because that was a landscape photo and this is a portrait shape but that's okay. We transformed. What do we press? Press enter. All right. We're going to flip flop our layers. So click and hold on the draft and drag it up. Now then, turn off show transform controls. And let's go to some of the selection tools. First one, the marquees. Rectangle, elliptical, single row, single column. All right. Rectangle marquee. I'm on the giraffe layer. Be sure you're on that layer. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. I could make this rectangle really large. And just select whatever and hit delete. And you start seeing your background. Hit the control and the letter D for deselect. And could we marquee this whole thing, you know, in blocks and places? Yes, you could, but we won't. All right, I want to show you some other things. Um, there are times that the elliptical marquee works. There are times, believe it or not, a single row is going to come in handy. And it just clicks, you know, it selects a single row of pixels. And you just hit delete. And for whatever reason, mine's not working right now. Hang on. All right, so I'm going to hit Control D and try that. In. Oh, it did get it. Look at that. It was so small and zoomed out I couldn't see. Check it out. It got the single row. All right, single column, same thing. I'll click up here and hit Delete. And then Deselect, and there you can see there um, what those do. All right, well, obviously that would take forever. We're going to go to the Magic Wand tool. And tolerance. Tolerance works just like your mom or your school teachers. The less the tolerance number, the less you get. So I'm going to change my tolerance to 10 and hit tab or enter to commit. And when my tolerance is low, I get a low amount of selection, not very much. I get less selected. So when the tolerance of your parents is small, you get away with very little. So you get very little. You can see what's going on here. All right, so I'm going to control D and deselect that. I'm going to increase the tolerance to 75 just because I've played with this and I know what's going to happen when I click here. It's going to select a lot. And I'm going to lose some little hair up here. And if I wanted to be real nitpicky about it, okay, it couldn't do that on a tolerance of 75. So I've got to go back, click on that, and then I would have to change my tolerance to about a 20. And then go back to the subtract from the selection to save the little hair fuzz okay so you know what it's not a big deal Miss McNall doesn't care 
we're practicing and learning. So at this point, hit delete. Cha ching. All right, we're going to control D and control out. And we're going to change our tolerance back to 75. Okay, or 70, it doesn't matter. Click and start hitting delete. And every time, and the reason there was a break there, and you're wondering, well, why didn't it get this? Well, there was a break in the um, shade and tone of the colors, and that's why I didn't get it. If I click on that, look what happens. It picks up all of it. And, oh, I was on minus. Add to the selection. Okay. And you hit Control D. Teachers make mistakes. All right, it gets all of that, and it's getting all of that. Now this, where we were earlier, it would be easier to use the eraser tool to take care of this. And it's hard to really, t I mean, we know that that's the background sky, but also it turns out this has a sky background. To be sure, we're going to add a new layer, pull it down below the fair view, go grab my paint bucket. And look, this is left over from lightening the giraffe. I need to reset my foreground background. I'm going to dump black paint in that background. And I'm going to turn off the fair view. And you can see what you have left. Grab that eraser. Oops, what happened? I was on the wrong layer. Control Z. I'm telling you, we all mess up sometimes. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller now. And whoop, whoop. It's good enough. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn that off. And you actually could right-click and delete that layer because we're finished with it. We don't need it. Turn the fair view back on. Go to my move tool. Show transform. Click on the giraffe layer. This is huge because it's the fair view. And if I didn't want that sign right there, I could do that. Or I could make sure the Fairview sign is seen and stretch this out a little bit more. And press Enter. Click on my giraffe. Now he doesn't need to be that terribly huge. And we'll act like he is going to eat a leaf or something out of that tree. He's got a body even though he was cut off and he's just kind of walking toward the front walk or something. I sound like Bob Ross. All right, so turn that off. Looks pretty good. Okay, I've got a little part of his body hanging off, so I missed that. Um, let's stretch him, make him a little bit taller. Tilt him a little bit more. And. It's not exactly in proportion, but that will work. So now to submit it on Canvas, you simply file, save as, don't send me a Photoshop file, okay? It slows me down on grading. Make sure you go to libraries, go to your picture folder, drop that down, and save it as a JPEG. Giraffe Blue Sky. You can leave it that file name, that's fine. Hit save. And you can begin to drop your photos that you submit to me on load so they'll load faster. So when you hit submit, it won't take so long. Um, notice the file size. This is 77.2K 70, um, kilobytes. Or... 97. It's just a little bit faster and the quality for me to view it on the screen just is not important. This will save everybody a lot of time. Just click OK. And voila. Alright. I have only a few more seconds so I will preview Max in another video. Hope that was easy. Thanks.